Some of them. You won't have anything to say in public comment. Do you second that for public comment? Yes, I'm second okay. that. Steve, I, I'd like to just uh, introduce Savannah Vining. Okay. Everybody, she's, she's a volunteer grant lady working with the Red Cross. Welcome.
Well, see, I, that, that's why I say uh, this in here never had been sealed like that. It was just a, a hole mm -hmm. opened up, and how they were utilizing it as fuel, we went away from it. They had a uh, a metal pan the size of the hole <laughs> set down on it, and that water was dripping through, and then it so, uh, over the years had rested holes in it, and all that moisture could get back up in it. Mm -hmm. Y'all got anything else? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, old Town Hall lease. Um, I would like to take that off the table until we hear back from them, just to take it completely off as old business for now. Yeah, we've already tabled it yeah. several times, and and I have um, been, I've emailed, them and they just responded, but no update on when they'll be here. I mean, we can always add it back. Yeah, yeah. But right now we'll take it off the agenda and old business. The long quick survey update. Uh, he has, uh, he lost his twin brother, uh, and he has been strict, uh, grieved heavily, and, uh, it's thrown him up about a week or two weeks behind, but, uh, that will be brought here. Uh, you want to go ahead and take that off, too? And then whenever it comes, it will be presented to the board that following that next meeting. Yeah, that'd be fine. Okay. Okay, uh, the call and drainage issue update. Uh, myself and um, Brian uh, spoke with Karen Skinner, Skinner and uh, she is in our area today. Along, uh, she's going to stop by this evening. Uh, and uh, me and her will have a, and Brian, if he's here, uh, will have a discussion on her. Uh, the state's asked for some more, some more information on our uh, grant, and uh, we'll get a, a full state point answer on on that grant box down there at the, at the college. It's there, whether they don't bother it or not, and. That way we can turn Mr. Collins loose on whatever he's going to do. Okay. Uh, number five, RTA Council. I think that we got open seat. And I think we got three candidates that, uh, Karen, you got three names you brought back? Yes. Okay. Uh, our RTA board recommendations, they've got three names. Is it okay to mention those names? Uh, well, you're discussing the qualifications of yeah. not anything okay. else. Uh, first one would be Richard Blevins. Second one would be Blake Orr. Third one would be Cynthia Guerin. Motion to accept Richard Blevins onto the RTA board. I'll second such motion. And we'll let uh, Karen notify him of the meeting schedule for the RTA. Is that all right with you, Debbie, that you contact him? Okay. Go ahead and contact him today so that he can be prepared for uh, the meeting at the end of uh, March. I will do so, yes. Okay, number six. The uh, Westport Hill Paving Project budget to number 14 uh, for $5,000. Yeah, that's that. Uh, Project we did up on full retro water tank to improve road and uh, this is the we already paid for the ditch line. This is for the paving so it didn't go away anymore. 
uh, they just now got us the invoice for the work that was completed. So we just need to uh, approve the amendment to uh, so it reflects in the budget. Motion to approve budget amendment number 14 for the uh, West Fort Hill project. Is there any further old business to come before this board? None appearing. Uh, going into new business, uh, Mayor update. Uh, as I was telling you, uh, McGill, uh, Ms. Karen Kima, she'll be by this evening, and I think they're going to be here tomorrow, too. Uh, in reference to our grant and, and probably needing some more information from us and uh she'll be given back today hopefully also the uh our new handhelds are working uh they're reading them yesterday and today uh there's a few minor glitches that they're going to be working through. Uh, RIP so, and their IP. Uh, yes. So, so the software is doing, working on that. Uh, the uh, best thing about them is you know, throw away that paper and pen and, and everything. They're kind of water, waterproof. Uh, there's one or two things that we're working on getting a, a little bit better cover for them and all uh but that that being said uh that's a that was a welcome man they uh they've been uh doing it waiting until the third or fourth day to to transcribe and move them over onto the one of the old red ones that we had yesterday uh between uh, 4 and 4.30, everything they had to transport over that was either handwritten or whatever was done in third, less than 30 minutes. So you're looking at probably, uh, I'd say, close to $75 saved right there just in the, the first week of got it. No. Uh, Finance update. Okay, we put a budget versus actual and we attacked it. We are eight months into the budget and 67% of the way through our year. Mm -hmm. The general fund has brought in 80% of the budget and has spent 63% of the budget. So we still have a 17% excess in the general fund. As of the end of February, the county tax collection is at 95.03%, which is very good considering that our trend was around 86% year end when before we used the county collection. So the county is doing a remarkable job. We're hoping for 100%, but more than likely that'll be up to 98, 97% at year end. The water sewer fund has brought in 65% of the budget. As I said, we should be around 67, so we're just a little low on our revenue, which we know with water and sewer, we lagged with um, late fees and not being able to charge late fees, not being able to shut off. And then our water and sewer expenses at 54%. So we still brought in 11% more than what we spent. We're doing well on both accounts. I just should mention that general fund will have to make it on the revenue we brought in year to date pretty much because there's not that much more, uh, 5% more to collect with the county. I want to mention just as to the board that just as a thought that if they approve the minimum wage, which let's, I personally, doesn't matter. 
Just want them to know that it would cost the town $37,384 a year. So if that does happen and we have to put that in, that's going to be a huge impact for the town of Robbinsville. I also gave you a spreadsheet on revenue and expense trends so that you can see how we will bring in revenue and spend from 2015 to 2020. It's a good thing to look at so that you can see what we do know is compared to last year at this time, things are not as good. And I contributed that to COVID. That's all I have, unless anybody has any questions. Yeah, why not? And just <laughs> on to this <laughs> one here, we have our, oh, is that on our agenda? Yeah, that's on the agenda. Okay. My bad, Debbie. Yeah. Uh, how do you say this? Revive? Hmm? Revive that? <laughs> Mr. John Power. Okay. I am here for two reasons today. One is to introduce you to our mama. <laughs> And two is to ask you to support our mama. Okay? And our mama is a music and arts mutual agreement. Okay? And what we are asking for is a collaboration between the town of Robbinsville, the Robbinsville Tourism Authority, Graham County, and Graham County Travel and Tourism. And the uh, goal of the MAMA is to be an ongoing collaboration of the local governments that will promote travel and tourism in the town of Robbinsville and Graham County and ultimately help to turn our area into a vacation destination rather than a place to visit or drive through while on your way to another destination. So the town of Brownsville and Grand County have little to offer for tourists and vacationers in the way of amenities. We have very few choices for lodging, few choices for restaurants, one or two craft and gift shops, no entertainment. And I said very few social gatherings, but probably no social gatherings. Uh, uh, with one, one mural is about to be completed, the one that Michelle started on the VFW building. And the addition of two more murals in the first year of this agreement will provide an opportunity for increased vehicular and pedestrian traffic throughout the uptown business and historic district. The weekend long dedication and ceremony, celebration, mountain music festival, car and motorcycle show in the fall will provide social gathering opportunities that will appeal to a broad spectrum of visitors as well as residents. In years two and onward, we have an opportunity to create more murals and art installations and refine our fundraising endeavors with future music festivals and vehicle exhibitions. The evaluation success of our murals and art installations will be demonstrated by increased traffic in the uptown business and historic district, and higher numbers of attendees and larger amounts of funds mm -hmm. generated will be indicators of a worthwhile music fest and car show. Uh, sustainability business owners will have a vested interest in obtaining new murals and art installations to increase traffic and business opportunities for their operations. And our nonprofits and civic organizations will want to provide staffing and produce quality music festivals and car shows so they can share in the funds generated. The total cost of the two murals shall be shared equally by the town of Robbinsville, Graham County. Robbinsville Tourism Authority and Grant County Travel and Tourism. Administration and management will be provided by RevGov. Seed prize money is, is included in this amount. And I think I gave you a handout and it hasn't been revised, the, the figures there. So I'm going to give you the proper figures as we go through this. Uh, the Abstract mountain scene mural with name brand and logo for both the town and the county, which is the adventure portal to your natural destination, 
with a beautiful abstract mountain scene and plain azaleas on the two corners. Uh, that probably represents our town and county about as good as anything ever could. Um, so our budget for all of this, this includes the festival and the two murals is $40,000. For the shared expense, if it's shared four away, would be $10,000 for each organization. Revved up staff is already supervising the installation of the first major mural approved for Main Street building. We have been working with the two artists as well as one of the building owners selected for this program since the inception of the project. We have also experienced with special events like the annual Revved Up Robin Hill Poker Run and the first two Revved Up Robin Hill Christmas celebrations and decoration contest. Um, the, you know, our, our mission statement is to improve the economic conditions in the county, the revitalization, help bring opportunities for local businesses. But one of the things that we're adding to our mission statement this year is the fact that we want to be good stewards of the funds that we generate. And we've evidenced that before. For instance, the four name branded welcome signs that we put up around the town, we did that for a cost of $7,000, which was $3,000 cheaper than one sign cost in Bryson City. So I think Rev Up already demonstrates that we are good stewards of the funds that we generate. And another example of this is this mural alone on the Loveless building is something that was uh, recommended in the revitalization, the Robbinsville reimagining, reimagining Robbinsville book that was done in 2012. When I previewed this with Becky Garland, she said, oh, they're finally going to do that. <laughs> so uh, this has been something that's been recommended by UNC, Chapel Hill, and Asheville Design Group when they uh, made all the recommendations on revitalization. So uh, we've got this, which is going to act like a giant billboard that can be seen from all over the bypass. And uh, we also have another mural going over here, which I'll talk about in a minute. Just the cost of one billboard, one standard billboard, is $250 a month. And there's an initial artwork fee of uh, $1,800. So one year for one billboard is going to cost $31,800. These paints that are put on here are DOT approved. Our artists use DOT approved paints. They're guaranteed. They're, they guarantee their work for ten years. So these built these these murals will be here for ten years. Okay, ten year cost for a billboard would be thirty one thousand eight hundred dollars. So if you did two billboards, that'd be sixty two thousand sixty three thousand six hundred dollars. And um, um, the music festival, what we hope to do is have a celebration, a dedication, dedication and celebration for the murals and a mountain music festival together with a car and motorcycle show, which Karen, the RTA is doing their first car and motorcycle show in May. May the 15th. And Rev Up is going to work with you on doing a poker run at that time. And then Karen has said that they would work with us on the car and motorcycle show at the end of it, whenever we do this dedication ceremony, which we're hoping will be either the end of August or, or sometime in September. We need to have the murals done first. So that's one mural. Don, I've got one question. Sure. Uh, the, I know it's on the side of the building, mm -hmm. and Mr. Lovelace owns that building. He doesn't own the adjacent property. What if they build beside it? Well, we're we're currently negotiating with them now, and and Jesse is interested in purchasing that lot to build a deck, which will be down low if he if he, okay. if he can do it. I would just I just would hate you know if we did approve this and you know, I hate them erect the building right beside it, nobody'd see it anyway. Right. Okay. Right. 
So anyway, he is he is interested in purchasing that property, and his plan is to build a deck down low so the whole mural would show above the deck. Okay. Okay. So there's another artist named Scott Merkin, and his project is North Carolina Musicians Mural Trail. They have already completed at least eight murals across the state. He's getting a tremendous amount of publicity for it. 60 Minutes is talking to him about doing a show. He has 20 original mus musicians on his musician's mural trail that he wants to get done in his initial offering. So he's got eight done. And we would be uh, number three if we can approve this this month. We would be the third. We would actually be the 11th of 20 murals done across the state. This is some of this work. This is uh, this is Roberta Flack, I believe, isn't it? Coltrane. These are murals that are already done. This shows the locations across the state. He wants to do Ronnie Millsap in Robbinsville. The ones in dark black are the are the murals that are completed already. So you've got Roberta Flack. Nina Simone, Earl Scrooge, and Don Gibson, Randy Travis, John Coltrane, Elizabeth Cotton, Betty Davis, and Thelonious Monk. Those are the ones that are done already. That's his initial offering. And we have two others that are ahead of us right now on his list to do. There's more. This, this is just information. Uh, musician Mural has garnered worldwide support and brought um, visitors from out of state to experience finished works in Black Mountain, Shelby, Marshville, Hamlet, and more. Trended number one on Reddit after a post in Australia drew more than 200,000 views and 1,000 comments. More than 500 tweets and 100,000 likes, 15,000 Instagram likes. Widespread local coverage on TV, print, and online. Weekly requests for interviews and potentially millions of online impressions and thousands of site visits. And that's Nina Simone in China. They just finished that. This is Roberta Black. I was wrong. And, and uh, this has been the sponsor here was Black Mountain Brewing in Black Mountain, North Carolina. And they have media stories and increased cultural awareness. And so that has increased their business and their visitors. Uh, the entire experience has been fantastic. The brewery's business is up 20% over July of the year, previous year. So that shows you how popular the mural trail is. Align your brand, cause, or call to action with one of the most unique statewide projects of the new decade, five reasons. It covers the state from urban centers to rural towns. Tens of thousands of people have already viewed the murals from social media and in-person visitation. This will expand exponentially with video, promotion, and time. The mural shop guarantees its work for 10 years. This is not a one-time event sponsorship or print ad. It is exposure for perhaps a generation or more. Presenting sponsor on their website, marketing, social media, and the murals themselves. Fostering pride in place, uplifting community, and honoring legends. North Carolina Musicians Mural is a concept. There are nine existing murals with ongoing conversations to secure approvals in additional communities. And like I said, there's already two more approved ahead of us. If we get approved, we'll be, I think, the 12th mural now on the list. So, and they have, they're proposing to place this mural on the county agriculture extension building right across the square over here. And these are, these are just a couple preliminary. The 
gable end of this building is vinyl siding, and we would have to prep that, and then they will paint up on the gable end as well. But just for this, we just did this as preliminary. He will submit drawing, and we will choose what we want to put on the building. Okay? So, the cost of this mural will be $10,000 cost of the Loveless mural will be $25,000. And the seed money for the, for the event, week long, weekend long event, is going to be $5,000. All of that to be shared equally by the four groups mentioned, four organizations. And just two billboards alone would cost, what did I say, $63,000? Over $63,800, and that, and that doesn't include the festival event that's thrown in as well. We have a, a list of musicians that live in the county, and what we propose would be to do a, a weekend long music fest and, and have them compete for a pretty major prize, you know, maybe a thousand dollar first prize uh, for the best band or the best group to play or vocalist or whatever color it is. We have a list of those people. We want to invite Ronnie Millsap to come for the celebration. And uh, I think the time is right. Ronnie's, I guess, over, what is he, 74 now, I think. And he, he did come and do a concert in Franklin last year and brought the county commissioners up on stage and everybody got along with it. Everybody enjoyed it. They renamed the Rodney York. They renamed the 129 for Ronnie. And so this is a time to, to honor him as, as a Robinsville native born resident. And uh, and this will bring tourists and traffic to uptown. Um, and it's a and it's a good opportunity and, and the expense is low. That's my presentation and I, I'm asking you to support this. And, uh, and connect to a $10,000 fee to help us make this reality this summer. This, the Ronnie Millsaps artists can do their work in one week once it's scheduled. And the other, the other artist is from Andrews, so she's more local. And I expect it will take her, that, that building is much larger. So this building, this building is almost twice the size of a regular billboard. It, this building is about 20 feet by almost 90 feet. Any questions? No, you answered my question about that, uh, you know, about the property. I hate to, you know, get the money and then they'd be able to build it out beside it and then you know, we all, nobody can see it. Right. But you said that he's working on possibly yeah, well, we're working, we're, Rev Duff is working too to, to, to try to secure that property for a walking trail up okay. from Ford Street to the, to the town square. In fact, I've got to schedule a meeting to go back with the artists this week. So okay. we're, we're and, and, and I'm a little bit optimistic. We had a meeting about a week ago or a week and a half ago with them. And uh, I think they're open to a proposal. Well, uh, I support this project I had since it started. We're going to think like now we're trying to get it actually going to see some uh, forward movement on it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I would like, I mean, we could lead the charge because it's inside sea limits. So I think we should lead the charge and be the first one to put up the money. And hopefully the other three uh, will suit, fall suit. So that's my motion. I would make a motion to. Uh, set aside ten thousand dollars for this project. My only concern, Brian, is just as Tanya said, you know, it may up the minimum wage. There we are. We've got to make sure that we've got the money for that. Are we going to be able to support uh, this extra stuff for that? I, I agree that the Bonnie Millsap thing definitely needs to be um, supported and awarded. I'm, I'm just a little bit, has the county agreed? Have you presented this to the county?
county yet, or we did your first one, John. Debbie, we I have made a preliminary presentation to all three groups. Everybody has been supportive of it, and they all feel like it will go. But I don't have this will be the first commitment that we need, and every every collaboration needs a leader. So you would be the leader, but. To address your concerns, if suppose someone did not go along with it, uh, Savannah Vining is here. You didn't get a chance to meet her. She's from uh, Silva by way of Winston Salem. She's a, she's attending Western Carolina for her MPA this fall, and uh, she is doing volunteer grant writing for us. And she feels that if we can't get the funding that we need locally, that she can write a grant for whatever we come up short to make the, to make the project go. And so, Brian, you recommended us with the first 10,000 of this, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. The other thing, one other thing, Debbie, to consider, when Great brought uh, UNC Chapel Hill and the Asheville Design Group in to uh, do a revitalization project for the county. They recommended that the county didn't need revitalization, Robbinsville needed it, and they put together an almost 80 page book called Reimagining Robbinsville. And their suggestions, what we've done from the beginning when we got us acquainted with that book, we've looked at the ways that would create the most interest for the least amount of money. And so the, the welcome signs, the name granted welcome signs were the first thing that we did. We have wayfinding signs going up now that's been funded and they will be they will be put in place within the next couple months. And this billboard was something that, that this mural on the Loveless building was something that they recommended in their initial book back in 2012. So you know, they, they recommended this as a major way to, to get revitalization going and interest in the town. Well, I'm going to second Brian on this. And this is just to set aside to see if the other ones will fall asleep. Yeah. So okay. hopefully they will. Yeah. Well, what we'd, li we'd like your commitment to be that as long as we can come up with the rest of the money that your commitment is there. I'll second that, Brian. Okay. Thanks, David. And thank you all. Okay. Next is budget schedule.
<clears throat> Next on the agenda is uh, stay bump. Uh, I've got this pulled up here on my computer. Uh, speed bump versus speed hump. Uh, the speed hump, uh, people have less to complain about than a full, full range or a three and a half inch rise and fall with it, all that tires the front end suspension out of my car or whatever. Versus these speed humps. The speed humps are, uh, they are uh, like four foot wide. And they just raise about inch and a half, two inches. What this speed hump does, it slows your traffic down to five or 10 miles an hour versus basically uh i've seen some speed bumps you feel like you've run run over a, a basketball sized rock and uh, a lot of these people live on gravel roads and stuff or they the road is horse boarded and everything they got their muffler hanging but halfway down they get one in speed bump and you look back behind you and your whole exhaust system is laying back there about three balls back. Uh, I do know in uh, Fredericksburg, Virginia, their whole town has Steve Hunt. And I talked with, uh, and I saw down in Charlotte, uh, I talked with the mayor at both places. And these speed humps has, uh, number one, has slowed the ink coming out of a patrol one or a deputy sheriff or how it's probably pen. Number two, the safety for the children. Because what these speed humps does, all four tires, before it gets over that thing, all four tires is up on this speed pump versus just that one sudden bam bam you hit me twice and what that does once you go over it at a higher rate of speed it's got you kindly wiggle wobble and all um, and, and it, it tends to slow you down more than than a speed bump does uh the only difference is is a speed hump it runs around we can get them around $700 a piece versus about $300 for a speed bump and all. But uh, they are, they can be put down by our maintenance. It says slow vehicle at 10 to 15 mile an hour, guaranteed breakage for 15 years, five lengths to pick from, Less aggressive than traditional bump, uh, speed bumps, highly visible and emergency vehicle friendly, long lasting and environmentally friendly, easy to install and remove for storage and relocation, <coughs> use of included speed hump, in counts, and re recommended to achieve the greatest products of longevity. And also, that's the two that uh, that we got here. To, you, we can go with some speed bumps, some speed humps. You don't have to buy them all. But I just want to let you know about the speed humps. And I have looked into the uh, speed humps and talked directly to other places, uh, one in North Carolina and one in Virginia, about these. Are these proposed pumps they'll be going on? Well, see, you, um, or you, you could, you could put, you, like, say, you just don't put three on one street, say, you use four street. You could put two speed bumps at the beginning and ten, 
and one big hump right in the middle of where, like, where your main school bus stop. They got one main stop right there at the big uh, Carringer trailer court. Uh, put your speed hump there. That way, you, and and that way, you could you wouldn't be having so much money out. One good thing about them too, they're not put down in your phone way. You can take them back out and move them to other locations as needed. So the proposed roads that they'll be going on is uh, Ford Street, Circle Street, and and Pella Street. Mm -hmm. But I'm all for the hunt. I'm not in favor of any of the speed bumps at all. The humps, I'm all favor for those. Uh, but I would like to see like a public forum and see what the town residents would like to see instead of us just going and doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, and this would be, anyway, this uh, money would be proposed for next budget year anyway. So it would right. be after our ne next budget year. But uh, when, it, I mean, I'd like to have a public forum when possible when all the regulations <coughs> are lifted or whatnot. Is there a speed bump on Ford Street? There's no. one already. No, no. Huh. Okay. no but there's, a, there's a, there's a uh, street drain there that acts like a speed bump. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. yeah. <laughs> okay. So that's that what I'd, I'd like to propose. You know, we get a pause and, and some feedback from the public, public. either by written form, email, uh, since we can't have like a public forum right now, is uh, put something in the paper and give an email that they could send to or text or something. That we, I'd like to have the community uh, residency to, to see what they think of them. I know some are in favor, especially the ones that have uh, children yeah. that live in those areas. And we have been approached before about putting them mm -hmm. up. So I would like that before we proceed on and we hopefully we can get that at least get the cost in the next budget in okay. case we proceed forward with right. that project and you're, you're just doing all the I mean, bumps yeah i don't want the bumps at all because they do, and I, I drove on the ones that were put up on Cody Street. Uh -huh. They're a little tough. <laughs> and, and, so, and too, and, and too, you're in a, a fire truck or an ambulance. Uh, if you've never hit one with a load on, uh, <laughs> you just think it's bad in a, a car. Uh, okay. I, uh, I'll get scheduled. Are the town of Ogdensville next audit is scheduled the week of July 12th? That's the information. Okay. Uh, I'd like to add something. I know I'll have to. Uh, I mean the agenda, or, but uh, we've uh, not this past year, but the year before we had two uh, clean up Robbinsville days, and I'd like to get back to that. And most time it's just our maintenance crew and our office staff will go up and pick up. We did good. We took probably about six hundred pounds of garbage the two times we did it back in nineteen, mm -hmm. and uh, I spoke with our maintenance uh, person and. Uh, they give me uh, uh, the day that they don't have trash, which would be a good day to do it. <coughs> and uh, we can get that out there. We'll do the spring clean the streets of Robinsville, uh, March the 25th at 10 a.m. March the 25th? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and anybody from the public wants to come out, just meet at the top of the hill to make that shop on the bypass. And we'll provide bags and uh, best for anybody to uh, come and assist us on that day. We'll just be picking up uh, 
trash and whatnot along the streets of the town. That's all, right. all I have. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, do you have anything for closed session? No. Nope. David, do you have anything for closed session? Uh, yes, Steve, I do. Okay. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to go into closed session. Yes. 143, 318, 11, C, A, 3. So I'll make a motion to the closed session. I'll take it there. Okay, and also, uh, pursuant to the provision of North Carolina General Statute 143, 318, 11, A, 3, and 143, 318, 11, C, I move that the town of Rockville County Council go into closed session to receive advice. From M. Ellen Davis, attorney for Town of Robinsville Town Council, which advice comes within the review of the type client privilege. Advice will be given legal advice about the legal issues and legal matters. So moved. So moved. 